So what is a security token? I get asked this a lot by friends and family members. And in this short video, I'm gonna tell you the basics of what they are, why they matter, and how you can take advantage of this rapidly developing market. I'm Andy Kriebel, one of the co-founders and CEO of Honeybricks. We help people build their wealth through tokenized real estate. And you can get started at honeybricks.com with as little as $1,000. Okay, to understand security tokens, I'm gonna to break this video up into what are security tokens, why security tokens exist, security token regulation, NFT versus security tokens, where security tokens trade, the advantages of security tokens, and then the disadvantages of security tokens. Last thing before we jump in, if you see value in this content, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It's incredibly helpful for us. And you'll find links to all the stuff I mentioned in the description below. All right, let's get started with what is a security token. So a security token, is a unique token that's issued on a blockchain. And the token represents a stake in a external asset or enterprise. It's different to a utility token, which grants holders special benefits, access, or promotions for a future product or service. And the difference between these two is really important and a big focus for the SEC in the US. A good way to differentiate the two is to understand what is the token backed by. A token backed by real estate is a security token, where a token backed by access to something like a special club is a utility token. So security token, asset backed, utility token, benefit backed. You got it. So why do security tokens exist? Well, to understand why they exist, we need to understand the initial coin offerings and some of the challenges they had in 2017 and 2018. You've probably heard of this before called the ICO boom and bust. Well, ICOs or initial coin offerings were a form of blockchain enabled crowdfunding, which an organization sold coins or tokens as a means for raising cash in a project. And normally when they were raising the cash, it was nothing but a PowerPoint and a dream. Now these ICOs took the crypto community by storm in 2017 and 18, raising billions of dollars through lots of different projects through ERC-20 tokens, which is the standard used for issuing these things on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, security token offerings, sometimes referred to STOs, are very similar to initial coin offerings, except for one key difference, which is that the security tokens are subject to regulatory oversight. So to conduct a security token offering, organizations need to follow a number of processes and compliance procedures. And the investors who buy these tokens are normally subject to different restrictions as well. And you can check out this video we did on the security tokenization process to learn more about that specifically. But back to the question of why they exist, the key thing is to understand the limitations of the old processes and the benefits of blockchain technology. So in a traditional syndicated investment, you need lawyers, accountants, advisors, checking the legality of who's buying and selling this stuff and are they allowed to do it? This creates a lot of complexity and unnecessary work, which leads to high friction, high transaction costs, and a lack of liquidity as no one wants to spin up different professional services firms over simple transactions. Now, through the use of smart contracts running on the blockchain, those important regulatory and compliance requirements can actually be coded in the smart contract. When I say coded, I mean law can actually be written in the code. For example, having a minimum 90 day hold period or not allowing more than 100 investors, stuff like that. So basically you're taking what was in the legal documents and putting them into software that does the professional services for you. And that makes security token offerings way superior in their issuance and management versus traditional security offering. This is good news and security tokens are gradually getting more and more favor as an efficient means of raising capital since they bring the benefits of blockchain enabled crowdfunding with a reassuring level of regulatory oversight. Now at our company Honeybricks, we issue security tokens that are backed by high quality commercial real estate. To do this, we use a mix of more traditional and blockchain based systems that do things like verify all investors on the platform added to different whitelists. We then have different security token contracts that mint the tokens. Then if a buyer and seller of the token wants to transact, the security token contract checks the whitelist to make sure that each side of the transaction is eligible to do the trade. And if so, the transfer is completed. Okay, so that covers why they exist. Let's take a closer look at the security token regulation. So when a company wishes to issue securities to investors, there are two paths they can take. They can either register them with the SEC or they can operate under a SEC exemption. And the most common exemptions are accredited investors under Reg D, non-US persons under Regulation S, crowdfunding under Regulation CF and Regulation A+. So whenever you see security tokens being issued, it's important to understand under what regulatory framework are they using, as this will influence how you can buy, hold and sell those tokens. Now, a common question we get at Honeybricks is around NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Security token offering and fungible tokens are different. A fungible token means that one security token in a given real estate property is just like any other for that same property. On the other hand, a non-fungible token represents ownership in a single thing. 
The non-fungibility of NFTs means that an NFT only has one owner and no NFT is the same. A good way to think about this is a single house could be an NFT. But if you broke that house into a thousand digital pieces, so different people could buy and own those pieces, each one of those pieces would be a security token. That means that Sam could own 10 pieces and Mary could own 50 pieces. The similarity here is that both run on a blockchain, but they do represent different things. Next up, let's talk about where security tokens trade. The growth of security tokens has seen several exchanges spring up worldwide. Now, security token trading is still very early in its development and you won't find a ton of stuff to trade but it's growing day by day and in the US there are three established security token exchanges there's Securitize which launched in 2017 and has since had some of the most successful security token offerings then there's INX which was actually the first US based decentralized trading platform and was previously known as Open Finance it's important to note that INX is only a secondary market as opposed to Securitize which operates a primary market as well and the third major player today is T0 which allows trading for both security tokens and also cryptocurrencies okay so now you got a pretty good handle on security tokens. You know what they are, how they're regulated, how they compare to NFTs and where they trade. Let's summarize the key advantages of security tokens. So on the advantages, the first one is that tokenization allows real estate companies to provide greater liquidity to their investors. This can improve investor returns and allow investors to reallocate capital to sponsors next project. The second one is additional capital sources. So tokenization provides exposure to real estate projects to a larger number of investors. The third major advantage is efficiency through automation. So smart contracts that underlie real estate tokens can automate compliance with security laws. They can automate a bunch of repetitive things like distributions, like tax and voting procedures. But like all things, there are some disadvantages to be aware of as well. The first one is they can reduce control of the asset owner's share registry. However, this can all be managed through a compliant whitelist, which they own. The second one is it can be less investor loyalty as investors can more easily trade or swap tokens and asset owners may be concerned about losing a stable investor base. And the third disadvantage would be that there's often more investors to manage, which requires different approaches to communication. Good thing is that there's a growing number of tokenization platforms like Honeybricks that can help maintain investor communications at scale. Okay, so that covers the background to security tokens. If you're looking to learn more about security tokens or want to know how we do it at Honeybricks, I encourage you to check out these videos we did on a tokenized real estate or visit honeybricks.com. Last thing, let me know if there's anything I missed and if you have any questions on today's content or Honeybricks in general, leave it in the comments below. Okay, see you later.